My son is still asleep in his bed. I have something hot in my hands. It's like that one minute where the world feels still. And it's Lent. I always feel like Lent is, like I'm never ready for it. I never think like, oh, let's dig deep. You know, I just think like, oh, this again. Like this is the deep end. This is the place where it's, you know, we can see all the way down. Lent is that stretch of 40 days of learning to sit in the ashes. And it's the moment where in the Christian story, if it were a non-pandemic world, we could stop by a church and they would like mark our forehead with a little cross and they would say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And last year it felt like we didn't know that yet. Like, <laughs> you know, we like, we, it was February, we still had lives. We still had things to do and places to go. And, and then it felt like Lent was kind of the, the beginning of an awareness that like we could no longer be constituted by our choices that we were going to be stuck. And Lent was like a way of being in that. But what is Lent this year now that we already know that, that we are fragile, that we are finite, that we have almost nothing left to choose? What is Lent like for us here? I think um, there was this uh, Trappist monk, just like the especially reclusive kind, and Thomas Merton, and he said um, something like that Lent is, a, Lent is a source of joy because the source of sorrow is the illusion that we're anything but ashes. And that like on the face of it sounds very depressing, but I think what it's saying is like, now that we're here, what do we see? What do we know? Because Lent is always two things at the same time. It is the invitation to walk with Jesus on the path of suffering and say like, what do we know about a God? What do we know about the world now that we know that God bleeds and dies? Like that. <laughs> that gets me. But also, what do we know about the world and each other now that we know that we need to be saved and the world must be saved and that it must be saved by love. So it's always two things. It's always ashes and it's always the fact that we need, we demand to be pulled into another kind of time, into a way of being pulled toward a future of hope but we're not there yet. We're stuck here with this scarf. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna try to do this. And I love that we can do it together. What do we know here? What do we know now that we know, you know? <laughs> I don't mean to sound like a, like a 1960s stoner, you know? But truthfully, what do we know now? Um. Tonight, I'm gonna to be doing a little service with one of my very, very favorite reverends, Reverend Nadia Bowles Weber. We'll be doing just a little uh, special. We just know that everyone can't um, be together right now. And so just an online little service for Ash Wednesday, which is like the moment where we can get sort of like marked, like, just like a, a readiness to enter, like to get in the deep end. So if you'd like to join us, it's gonna be at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and it'll just be short and she's good. <laughs> but just to like get in the deep end together. So bless you on this day. Let this not be a burden. Let it just be a time where when you see the world as it is, you could feel confirmed that like, yeah, Sometimes we see a lot of dust. All right, bless you.